All righty, time for another edition of Science Sunday. Joined by, of course, Aoife Ryle. Good morning. Good morning. So we're in the South Tower, fifth floor, Genome and Me gallery space. Yeah, I thought we'd switch it up a little bit Yeah, I, li today. I like it. Yeah, yeah. this is a really popular uh, exhibit. Yeah, yeah, I had to, maybe some other co-stars today. Um, we have some zebrafish in here, and some are the normal wild type, and some are a little special. Um, can you maybe figure out what, what's um, going on? Some of them are glowing. Yeah, they glow. Fluorescing? They fluoresce. Uh -huh. Yeah, we've been talking a little bit about that lately um, under a black light here. And we get a lot of questions <laughs> about these guys, if we're feeding them something or if we're dyeing them or coloring them to make them like glow. breaking out a highlighter? Yeah, okay. <laughs> and the good news is we don't do that um, every morning. They are actually genetically modified okay. to glow. Um, they were originally genetically modified to help uh, look for pollution in waterways in India. So they would glow if there's like estrogen-like compounds in the waters, and then we'd know we have to clean them up. Okay. Um, but they're a really good example of genetic modification. Awesome. So we can talk a little bit about how that works. So this, we'd say like this is maybe the genome of our zebrafish. Imagine this had a couple million more <laughs> of these Legos. I don't want to hold all that though. And so what they do is they'd actually take a gene from another organism, in this case a jellyfish. You have our uh, jellyfish gene there. Okay. So this is a piece of a gene that they would extract using a technique called CRISPR. And then in an embryonic uh, little zebrafish, they actually would just insert that. So now this zebrafish is now coding not only for all of its normal stuff, but also for that glowing protein. Okay. And here we have. We get these. Excellent. And so the good news is now that they have that gene, when they reproduce, they pass that on. So we don't have to keep doing that every time. They now just carry that clone. Gene. That works out nicely. Yeah. So it's just <laughs> incorporated into their genome. All right. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, so lots of cool things happening, of course, here at the Science Center. Mm -hmm. And in the event folks maybe can't make it out or have been part of your very popular STEM in a Box program in the past, you've got a new iteration. Yes. For June. And this is actually our last STEM in a Box until the fall. Um, so definitely get in on this one. Um, it's starting to sell out. Okay. Um, but you can jump on the website and reserve your boxes. All right, so ctsciencecenter.org, mm -hmm. reserve purchase, and then shipping's even included. You get yeah. them delivered to you. Yeah. Uh, one box, in case you're not familiar, serves a family of two mm -hmm. and ages six to 12. Yes, and we send you everything you need in that box. It's, real, it's a really cool program. Yeah. So, and yeah. looking forward to the fall and what's coming up next. I know, me too. All right, Eva, <laughs> thank you so much. And of course, we'll see you for another edition of Science Sunday next weekend.